November in Georgia, and a mechanical gypsy tour of speed unfolds at Road Atlanta, the 1970 American Road Race of Champions. The official who's who of club racing is written in a single frenetic weekend. Over 400 pedigreed speed merchants race for a handful of glory. Only 21 champions are chosen from two days of blazing competition in a series of 30-minute sprints for a line of small print in a record book for a fleeting electric moment called winning. 400 drivers versus Road Atlanta. 400 drivers versus themselves. 400 drivers versus 900 crooked miles. Crooked Miles is brought to you by Dotson, who recommend you drive a Dotson, then decide. Three million miles of club racing, and this is where it all ends. The American Road Race of Champions. Only the track-tested blue bloods of the speed set make it here to Road Atlanta. Each of over 400 drivers has outrun all competition one of the Sports Car Club of America's seven geographic divisions. Long before his meticulously prepared ride rolls into action, each contender concentrates on a single objective, unlocking the mysteries of an impassive 2.6-mile strip of asphalt called Road Atlantic. Road Atlantic, an insistent challenge to sleek, pampered packages of speed skillfully integrated alliances of human reflex and mechanical innovation. You paint a picture in your mind of what that corner will look like when you see it. And many of the turns here, you're, you're turning before you can actually see the turn. You're aiming for a spot that you can't see. You don't really relax. You can't relax your mind. You might relax your body. But you've got to keep your mind on the turn ahead. You keep worrying about what's over the next hill. You can't see what's there, so you just kind of worry about it a little bit. But if you're not ahead of the car, uh, you're in trouble. I hate to use the cliche, it separates the men from the boys, but I think it would tend to do that. In A production, Don Greenwood's flag-striped Corvette jumped to a quick lead over the immaculate fiberglass pliers of Jerry Thompson, 12, and Tony DiLorenzo, number 11. Hobbled by minor engine problems, DiLorenzo dropped far off the early pace before the power failure worked itself out. Other members of the Big Iron fraternity had trouble taming Road Atlantic. In spite of smoggy oil spills like this one, Greenwood thrashed to a six-second lead over Thompson, the defending national champion. Holding 600 uninhibited horses in the right groove at up to 175 miles an hour, locked into a tunnel of complete concentration, this is the far out world of A production. Thompson unwound a new track record averaging close to 101 miles an hour. But the upset victory went to the flashy flagship driven by Michigan's Don Greenwood. Time it 
Sharp, Jack Scoville, John Morton, Alan Johnson. C production was loaded with former national champions as the proud factories of Porsche, Datsun, and Triumph pulled out all the stops. This was touted as the weekend of speed super race as Bob Tullius, a four-time national champion, kicked off with a quick lead over John Morton's sleek Datsun Z car. out pulled Tullius on the pit straight in lap two and eased ahead as the leaders fought over inches at 150 miles an hour. his maroon Dotson into second place, as the Porsche pack couldn't seem to find the right combination. <laughs> Lap seven, and Tullius ran into mechanical difficulties, as Dotson set up for a clean sweep. Bob Sharp cut Morton's eight-second lead in half, but the final order of finish remained Morton, Sharp, and Kansas class John McComb. For some, happiness is a kiss in victory lane. For others, happiness is planning for next year. Fabulous car. If there can be a single theme underlying the complex world of club racing, a kaleidoscopic realm cluttered with scattered engines and ornamental young ladies and the spirited male music of machines at speed, then that single theme would be competition. At 1970's Road Race of Champions, the dogfight in deep production was a spectacular example of how club racing has earned this kind of reputation. This was a duel in the Georgia sun of Road Atlanta, a gutsy, fender-thumping, flat-out run for daylight. The early leaders were Dan Parkinson's quick Datsun 2000, dogged by the spitfire of two-time national champion Brian Perstenau.
Central Division champion John McComb was an early dropout, twisting off a drive shaft on lap four. One lap later, and first to now, parked his Spitfire as mechanical problems shelled three of the early leaders. This set the stage for a classic duel between Carl Swanson's Spitfire and Jim Fitzgerald's Maroon Dotson. With five laps to go, Swanson felt a rear wheel coming loose, but refused to back off an inch as both cars fought for the fastest line through road Atlanta. Final few yards decided the race when Fitzgerald rammed past on the inside as Swanson fought to control a second place car that had only three wheels. In one of the weekend's most spectacular finishes, the final margin was a combination of courage, determination, and that indefinable welcome kind of magic called luck. Thing for me, those three-wheel cars aren't too fun, too much fun to drive. All things happened very rapidly. Carl was just doing a great job. He went in close and lost it. The rear end came around, and I couldn't slow up if I wanted to. So it was just forge ahead and beat him across the line. I guess it was pretty much luck. Club racing is an infectious assortment of emotional highs and lows. It promises both the end of the rainbow and sometimes the end of everything. engineers. They come when speed calls. But why? I'm a horrid bowler. I don't golf very well, but I can drive a race car. and I enjoy it. It's good relaxation, if you can believe it. And, and this is why I drive. It's fun. I guess we all drive because we love to drive. There isn't any other reason. Certainly not from a money standpoint. You know what you've accomplished. If you win the race, they come around and hand you the checkered flag and you get to kiss a dolly and you really know you've won something. There's nothing uh, subtle about racing. If you can, if you've got the goods and you can do the job, it it shows for everybody. The competitive aspect of racing is, I think, what's the most important thing. Uh, most of us have gigantic egos, and um, to satisfy those egos, we race. When you can put it all together and come across first, stick your hand up and get the checker first, it's the the most gratifying, rewarding thing I have ever done. And, uh, Formula V is the highest known form of mechanical fetal mania. John McCollister, number one, broke on top as the pack buzzed around the undulating Road Atlanta roller coaster with little margin between the first 10 mini rockets. Harry Ingle, 34, the pole center in this race, showed the way into lap five. McCollister, James Cox, 44, and Garrett Van Camp, 49, heading the first wave of pursuit. Almost every point of view, there's only one way to describe Formula Volkswagen racing. It's unreal. Powered by identical standard VW engines, they wind up to 120 mile per hour speeds and 
link up in clumps of fierce competition, like strings of the fastest link sausage in the world. Pulling away from the field, the first four cars headed for home, locked in their individual duel. Winner Harry Engel describes the race's final moments. The second place car usually can put himself in a winning position. I went on to the back straight on the very last lap, in first, and I kind of slowed up as soon as I made a little run, and the other guys came blasting by. I picked a quicker one and jumped behind him, and the, the draft is the, the real ticket with these cars. I might have had a six inches or a foot on him. I knew I was there then. It had to just go just a few more feet, and uh, it was already screaming, so I knew he'd make it that far. Angle over McAllister by two tenths of a second. Just another everyday Formula V cliffhanger. I had the right gears, the right car, everything was right, and I could get ahead at the end of the shoot. And that's how I won. I about ran John off the road, but I, I had more stuff at the end. Day Sports Racing produced the weekend's top speed. heavyweight sports racing king, Jerry Henson, qualified for both high-speed tours. Henson was heavily favored to win a fourth consecutive crown at the wheel of bright orange number 44, Peter Rebson's Can-Am car. Oscar Kowaleski brought his own Can-Am rocket, a McLaren number 54, and pushed Henson to the left. Averaging over 105 miles per hour, this shootout wasn't decided until the final turn. 1970s heavyweight speed king by one-tenth of a second, Oscar Kowaleski. Patience was the key to the Formula A blast-off, with Jerry Hansen again playing a major role. Kurt Rhino blew past top qualifier Gerald Rainey, number 99, through the S's and into turn six on the first lap. Hansen, 44, slammed the door a lap later, charging from fifth on the grid into second place. The hansen Rhino dogfight lapped Road Atlanta at speeds averaging over 108 miles an hour. Hansen finally thrashed into first place on the back straight. as Dave Heinz waited for something to give. Fighting for the line into turn six, the leaders tangled. Rhino's car an instant wreck, and Hansen in trouble. Heinz, running smoothly, roared into the lead as Hansen limped into the pits. Nineteen seventies new Formula A champion, Dave Heinz, in would you believe number fifty-seven. The big brothers of Formula Volkswagen are the single-seated MIDI rockets of Formula Ford and Formula Super V, capable of top ends close to one hundred fifty miles an hour.
Ron Zeitler, 21, led the early going, tailgated by Bob Lazier and Bill Scott in 36 and 39, respectively. Jersey's Tom Davy, number three, had come from eighth on the grid to first place. Powered by Ford Cortina, or 1,600cc Volkswagen engines, this relatively new slot in club racing grew out of the great success of Formula V. Inches off the track surface was the competition a mechanical Siamese twin in the rearview mirror, towed in your vacuum and ready to slingshot past at the right moment. Hanging on by a few feet, Davy fought off the challenge of Formula Ford jockey Skip Barber and continued his front-running strategy. Number 34, the Formula V King, made his move for a double win a lap later. A lap to go, and Davey outgunned all opposition down the pit straight and headed for victory lane, a winner in his rookie year at the Road Race of Champions. Over 400 drivers come to Challenge Road Atlanta, but few enter that charm circle called winning. I don't know, I just kept passing people in the beginning and the car kept going faster and faster and I just held on, you know. The Speed King Spectacular was completed in a stunning rush of mechanical magic. It took over 44,000 miles of practice and qualifying to pick the winners. It took 11 new track records. It took 900 crooked miles. I went to sleep to dream last night Crooked Miles was brought to you by Dotson, who recommend you drive a Dotson, then decide.